With over 80 federal subjects, Russia is by far the most crowded federation in the world. Among other things, that means that this country is also one of the most diverse places on the planet. Today's episode will be about a European corner of Russia called Murmansk. Is it cold there? Is it dark? What is Murmansk all about? Stick around for a few minutes to find out. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Welcome to the North, a cold, dark place that kinda resembles a famous kingdom from a famous story. Murmansk Oblast is a Nordic region of European Russia, as big as Greece but with less than a million people. The reason why it's so sparsely populated is not hard to guess, the climate is harsh and unstable, which is no surprise since it lies almost completely above the Arctic Circle. Still. Murmansk has a lot of features that makes it a good enough place to live in, not the least of which is its nature. Hills and mountains, forests, tundra, a hundred thousand lakes and eighteen thousand rivers. That's what nature offers to the inhabitants of Murmansk. But the place is also a trading post, a military outpost and a popular tourist destination. Which is what we'll discuss in the following minutes. Before we get into all that, we have to take a look at the history. You might already know this, but the Sami are the indigenous people of the region known as Lapland, or Sapmi, of which Murmansk is a part of. Nowadays, however, they represent a very small minority in this oblast, less than 0.2%. The Slavic influence over these lands is long, starting from around the 12th century AD. By the 15th century, Murmansk became a part of the Moscow Principality, but the area remained sparsely populated. Fur trade and fishing were the most lucrative occupations, but that took only about 2500 people. This was in the 17th century, and it took another 300 years for Murmansk to reach 13,000 residents. The 20th century saw the biggest development of Murmansk and only once roads were built, mines were opened and the infrastructure was updated, the population exploded. The largest city north of the Arctic Circle, with a population of around 300,000 people, is the city of Murmansk. It was named after the Murman coast, which in turn is an old Russian term for Norwegian. Thanks to the warm currents of the North Atlantic, the city is an ice-free port all year round, so it also became one of Russia's largest ports. Murmansk was the last city founded in the Russian Empire. During World War I, a railroad to the north was built to help receive Allied military supplies. The terminus of that railroad was to become fast a large settlement that in 1916 was christened as Romanov on Murman, after Russia's imperial dynasty. Today, Murmansk has pretty much everything you need and is considered to be the most developed city beyond the Arctic Circle. Unlike other Arctic settlements in the world, Murmansk is well connected to the rest of the country, it has a busy economy, plus the expected cultural and sports centers, bars, hotels, restaurants and so on. Because Murmansk has an ice-free shore, it quickly became a major military outpost. Russia's northern fleet is headquartered in this oblast, spread across seven cities and towns, five of which are close to foreigners and unauthorized civilians. This fleet is tasked with the responsibility of defending the country along its northern coast and as such it's frighteningly well equipped. Russian warships and nuclear submarines abound here, as well as fighter jets and bombers, coastal troops and nukes of course. While some ships are down for repairs or inactive, and after the fall of the USSR there's been a dip in the financing of the Northern Fleet, don't think this makes them any less dangerous. Beyond any doubt, the seas and shores of Murmansk host one of the most powerful and dangerous military branches in the world. If you think about packing your bags and moving to Murmansk, think twice. Winter temperatures hover between minus 14 and minus 20 degrees, but it can drop below minus 30, while the average summer temperatures sometimes exceed 17 degrees. 
Obviously, climate change made its presence felt here too, so there have been milder winters and warmer summers lately, but that doesn't make it a tropical paradise. And there's another thing. Being so close to the North Pole means that Murmansk experiences the so-called midnight suns and polar nights. Between the end of May and end of July, the sun never sets here, while in December and January it's continuously dark. If you can get used to this, then go for it. Murmansk awaits you. Have you ever thought about what would happen if you dig a hole through the Earth? Why, you would end up in China, of course. Every kid knows that. But has anyone ever tried this? No, not even close. Aside from the fact that you would need to dig through literal molten rock, Earth's diameter is 12,742 kilometers. That's a lot. And the biggest hole we ever dug, like ever, is barely 12 kilometers deep. 12.262 kilometers to be precise. And that hole is in Murmansk Oblast. The Kola Super Deep Borehole is the deepest artificial point on Earth, dug out in the 1970s and 80s in the Pachensky district. The hole is only 23 centimeters wide and it was created to see how far down we can actually dig. Digging so deep wasn't easy at all. There were numerous breakdowns, high pressure and temperatures at these depths reached an astounding 212 degrees Celsius. But from a scientific perspective, this was a successful project. We gained more info about seismic waves, found water even at those depths, microscopic plankton fossils and large quantities of hydrogen gas. If you want to go visit the site, you can, but don't expect much. The site was completely abandoned in 2008 and the borehole was welded shut. What nuclear disasters have you heard of? Chernobyl? Fukushima? That's probably it. But they're not the only ones in history. Murmansk also witnessed a nuclear accident back in 1982. The Andreev Bay nuclear accident took place in a naval base where radioactive waste was stored. In 1982, 700,000 tons of highly radioactive water leaked into the Barents Sea. Protocol violations, bad storage design and a dangerous lack of proper maintenance led to the leaking of one of the pools where spent nuclear fuel was stored. It took 1,000 men 6 years to clean up the site. While we don't know how many were exposed to too much radiation, the number is probably high. The entire area was heavily contaminated and most of the cleanup crew had poor or no protection at all. However, that cleanup wasn't complete. To this day, there are tons of spent nuclear fuel that need to be removed, a job that's every bit as risky as going into reactor number 4 of Chernobyl. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.